The first speaker is Jérôme Delacroix, who will be telling us about how Frogan's websites were introduced on the internet. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Jérôme. Hello, Jean-Emmanuel. Thank you for being with us tonight. For those of you who don't know you, you were at the first Forgans Technology Conference, where you presented the, how Forgans Technology was used in China, where you carried out an exploratory mission to see if that technology could rise to its ambition and go global, adopted to the uh, way users use the internet in China. Absolutely. Tonight you'll be presenting us something different, something more general and international at the same time. The context in which Forgan sites will be introduced on the internet. For those of you who don't know it, Forgan's technologies on the internet, that's an essential document for the Forgan's project. It is also available on the website of Forgans Technology, www.forgans.org. This document seeks to be pretty much rough, raw, straight to the point, and presenting ideas on the Forgans ambition and how it is suited to existing needs and that Jerome will be defining straight away. To link up with what we said yesterday, Alexei Thomas, co-creator of Forgans Technology, presented the ambitions of the Forgans project. It's a bit different here, Jerome, because this will be much more down to the point, concrete, with the emphasis on the Forgans websites. Yes, we'll be focusing on Forgans websites, what end users will be seeing, in fact. I know that you presented while well, you prepared a, a brief presentation, well, as Joy Manuel said, tonight we'll be seeing something that came from a document that you can find at foregrants.org. I'll just interpret it for you, comment on it, and maybe um, there may be a desire to talk about it in the room on the internet. Well, first of all, this document in describes the current situation for content publishing on the internet. Yes, because internet is becoming quite uh, long-standing. Some people in this room were born after the internet, for whom it's totally native. Today we have some figures that are truly uh, interesting as regards the penetration of the internet in the world's population. We can see that there are three billion internet users around the world today. That's a huge figure. But it accounts for only 40% of the world's population, meaning that we still have a huge potential in terms of developing the use of internet. So, uses, well, this is possible today thanks to two software layers email and the web, because the web in particular allows you to consult content published on websites that may be accessed thanks to domain names. Now, today we have 276 million domain names, a huge figure, rising by 7.5% as compared to 2013. So we see uh, large figures which can still grow considerably. Here you have all the sources for you to find the studies on which these figures are based. So that's the overall context for the introduction of Forgan's web websites. This all started some time ago. Thank you. So the internet changed recently in terms of use with the strong appeal of mobile technologies, which you spoke about yesterday. Can you explain that? Yes. As of 2007-2008, and the advent of smartphones, especially with a, a fruity name that I won't mention, but it's well known, from then on, the use of internet developed much more in mobility. 
And that was carried out in several different ways over time. Some of you may recall the first WAP sites that were truly basic. There were other attempts to consult content on mobile devices, technologies like NEMA developed in Japan. But we can say that mobile internet really started around 2007-2008 with the development of mobile applications to such an extent that to consult content on a mobile phone or a tablet in mobility today, there are two main options. Consult content from a mobile web browser or from a mobile application. The match was tough between these two possibilities. Today, the result is clear. We have noted that in the United States, the average user per month spends three hours 45 with mobile applications and only 30 minutes with mobile webs. That means that consulting content today on the internet is done more and more in mobility and more and more based on using applications. To put things differently, consulting websites in the mobile, the web mobile is more and more deserted. The fact of switching to mobile applications, where is the problem today? Before being a problem, it's, mobile applications are practical. A mobile application, while they're user-friendly, is much more easier than consulting from a browser. Another advantage is that they can use all the native functions of a telephone. The camera, for example, to do elaborate things, the mobile application is practical. The problem is that that is offset by many drawbacks for content publishers and for internet users. To start with content providers, developing a mobile application is complicated. Because when you develop an application, in actual fact, you're developing several applications because the application must run in different environments. As you know, there are different mobile operating systems, for example, iOS by Apple, Android by Google, Windows Phone, and others. I'm just mentioning the most uh, widespread. So a content provider to make a mobile application needs to make several releases for the application to run in all these environments. Even on a given environment, we still have variants because we have a fragmentation of mobile operating systems to be absolutely sure that your application will run on all telephones. You must build variants and it's complicated, com costly, and it takes time. So that's for the content provider. That's the main point. On the user side, mobile applications are no panacea because you have to install it and that takes time. Often it requires a, a high-level wireless connection, Wi-Fi, 3Gs, or even 4G. You can't install an indefinite number of applications on your phone with the risk of overloading your memory. And for all these reasons, mobile applications raise difficulties for content providers and Internet users. This is why, despite their success, mobile applications are still far from having caught up on the big success encountered by websites. Look at the figures on the screen. Today, we have 179 million active websites, websites where there's really something with update, uh, up-to-date content and that was not produced automatically. 179 million, that's huge especially in view of the number of mobile applications, 1.2 million applications on the Apple Store and 1 million applications on Google Play. So today, we're looking at a paradoxical situation. All Internet users spend more and more, switch more and more to mobile technology, but for publishers to reach the Internet user is increasingly costly and complex. So what do content providers do if they can't or they don't want to make mobile applications to be able to be present on mobile devices? Well, there are several solutions that were considered. There's one, quite simply, to host your content or to post your content 
on a third party website, for example, of a social media. We all know the Twitters, Facebook, and the like. So that's one possibility. Instead of developing your own application or your own website, you can very well post messages on this type of media. The problem is that in so doing, the publisher is not in direct contact with the user. It has to go through a third party. And there's no real uh, complicity possible between your software, your content provider, and the internet user, as was the case at the beginning of the internet. So until now, there was no satisfactory solution. So I imagine that given the topic of our conference today, there's another possibility to reassure your presence on mobile devices while offering an, an interesting uh, experience for users and content providers. Jean-Manuel, you are so perspicacious. It is in this complicated context to cope with this problem. This is why Forgan's technologies, technology was born. A few reminders of how Forgan's technology can solve these problems. Alex has spoke about this yesterday, so I won't go into that in detail. But Forgan's technology is interesting for content providers who can develop Forgan's websites once and for all without having to bother with the operating system, the type of device, the internet user will be consulting the content, and that's extremely important. Furthermore, content, the rendering of content will be the same, down to the pixel. That's the promise of Forgan's technology, irrespective of the hardware software environment. So a lot of time and money saved for content providers. And benefits for internet users too, because Forgan's technology was designed for simplicity, ease of use, to make for intuitive browsing and security to protect internet users for any mishaps on the internet when they are mobile. So I know that you no longer have any slides for what you have to say <laughs> exactly. So it's time, I guess, to show you as a preview what the Frogans sites will look like. I must say that this wasn't really planned. I'm looking at the technical staff up there because we'll have to use a webcam. I hope you'll be able to see. So Jérôme, you have the prototypes, a few prototypes of Frogans sites. Uh, created recently by OP3FT on a mobile system. I'll be attempting a real performance today using one microphone, a camera, and a telephone at the same time. So I apologize beforehand if I get things wrong. I'll try to play the cameraman if you wish. So on screen, <laughs> so the interface for Frogan's player, the software for consulting Frogan sites on the mobile telephone. Lights on, please. Here, what you're seeing is what we call a scene, the equivalent of an office, basically, where you can have several foregone sites constantly that you can select to choose the content you want. For example, we'll remove three. We have three here, rather. If I click on a foregan site, you see it pops up on screen. I'm sorry for the uh, poor resolution. Here you have a Forgan site, which is the city of San Matthew. Below the this square, the Forgan site, you have here. Uh, 
So you have a zone where you can surf on this foreground site and select active elements. If I move my finger to the zone, you could, you could possibly see the various zones that are lighting up so that I can select the menu on the Frogans site. The Frogans site may be resized very easily. All you have to do is to move your fingers on the screen. And you will see that when the Frogans site is reduced, its content changes when it's minimized. Here have the content, the Frogans, uh, the full Frogans site, if I reduce its size, after a certain time, content, the content changes. And that's very practical if you were to have several, for example, depending on the space you have, you always have a site displaying only the relevant data without everything being tiny in a little square. So let me maximize once again. Now you can see a bit better the various elements on the foreground site, information on the city of St. Matthew, the municipal council, business in this town. If I move my finger to this small cursor, you will see that the various menus light up one after the other, allowing you to choose the menu you want with just a click. What's very practical is that you can just use one finger without ever masking con the content, which is a problem with mobile applications. Because when you click on something, you no longer see what you're clicking on. Whereas with this system for browsing, on screen, you constantly have all the menus that you're interested in. So let me minimize. Here you can see another example. This is a mock-up of a site that was made for a restaurant. There too, you can look at the menu. How to get there, and so on and so forth. Naturally, you can also put Frogan's player in landscape mode. And okay, there it goes. And the same mode of browsing applies by using this scroll bar. You can enlarge the site and let them scroll one after the other. So there we have it. Sorry about the conditions here. It was a little bit rock and roll, <laughs> my demonstration here. <laughs> with agility, as you must have noticed. Thank you, Jerome. But if you can encourage people watching us over the internet, the people in this room will be able to come and take a look at the prototype and even try out surfing, browsing. If those of you are looking remotely, want to come to the next Forgan Technology Conference, you too can be able to touch the Afrogan site. Thank you, Jerome. That was unexpected, but that was great. So these are the new prototypes developed on a mobile platform for the time being. The, the graphical user interface and the resolution system for access to your content. Thank you. Thanks to both of you. That was a great moment. Joam, stay with us. There may be questions. A very touching moment, because for many of us, this is the first time, even though it was a bit like uh, a television in the old days, the first time we're seeing a Frogan site. So these are sites that are extremely easy to use. That's the first thing I would say, and directly intended for users with resizing so that you can adapt content to the window and what you're looking at. So the benefits 
of Forgan's technology are there. We've started to reveal them. Yesterday, Alexei Thomas, one of the co-creators of this technology, gave us a date, the second quarter of 2015 for a first sight. We're seeing it today. The progress is, the project is moving forward. That's interesting to see. Personally, I will go and see it on the phone uh, and take a close, closer look. At OP3FT, I'll sell to where we have standard wars. If you had done that on an iPhone 6, it wouldn't have been a problem. But we'll see about that later on. Let me just add one thing. As you said, Stefan, and rightly so, four gun sites are really designed for users, but also in terms of use. In other words, what you see in this in this demonstration is that Forgan size adapted to a given type of use in mobility, in the vertical position, when you don't have all the comfort you need for browsing. With the emphasis given to content, the visual, so it's all focused on use as well. OK, great. We have users in the room. Let's turn to them to see if they have any questions for you, Jerome. And on this first demonstration of a Forgan site, do not hesitate to raise your questions. Just raise your hands and I'll be coming to you. I'm looking for raised hands. OK, here we go. Hello. I was wondering, in terms of use and Forgan's sites, what do you plan to do? Yesterday, you spoke about using it, but more in the hands of individuals. I think of more of an industrial use. I know that the French Postal Office, this is just one example, uh, equipped um, 90,000 uh, um, staff members with telephones. What about things like that? Let me answer that question, but without necessarily uh, trying to uh, talk about the business model of future startups who will be creating uses for Forgan sites. What we may imagine are use to applications in rather difficult situations in terms of bandwidth, for instance, limited bandwidth, or in, um, say, uncomfortable um, conditions. So you could have uh, Frovence uh, site applications on industrial sites, um, brick and mortar sites, and other B2B applications, because this is something we have planned for the internet. So the answer would be yes, we can both address the individuals, but also the businesses and the professionals. Another question. Yeah, I saw that there were three sites on your demo. In fact, it's possible to have several sites uh, running in under the same environment uh, simultaneously. On a cell phone, on a smartphone, I think it will not be possible. Correct me if I am wrong, but uh, I don't think uh, we can only interact with only one uh, program site at a time, simply because it's, uh, it's in line with the re reality of use. It's already difficult to browse on in mobility with several. To, to do so with uh, several contents uh, would be totally delusory. So OP3FT have decided to have only one frozen site displayed on a mobile interface at one point in time, but on a desktop. This will be possible to have um, several sites at the same time. Yeah, but as you mentioned, uh, for the mobile, you may have uh, have resolved several frozen sites to have them in the background and shift uh, easily from one to the other, as you showed us. So uh, you can have um, concurrent um, usage. I don't know if you want to check the weather forecast on your frozen site and then back to your personal site. There are potential uses. Now, an additional question you mentioned uh, that it would be impossible uh, on, on a mobile phone to have uh, several applications running together. Uh, could you tell us about the tablets on the tablet? Would that be possible to have several um, applications running concurrently? Well, uh, it could be considered. 
It's not uh, what we have chosen to do because we wanted to have an interface that was consistent between or across cell phones and tablets, two rather um, similar uh, uh, terminals, plus we, you have the, the tablets which are hybrids between the tablets and the phones, so we wouldn't like to uh, make things more complicated for the uh, user in his or her learning curve. You know, but what is different with the tablet uh, due to the size of the screen, which is slightly larger, is that these um, other frozen sites that you might have opened and uh, put in the background, you may continue to see them in their smaller form uh, next to your bigger frozen site screen or window. Uh, well, that we can uh, fine tune in terms of ergonomics at OP3FT, but uh, this is the way uh, the uh, larger size of the tablet uh, screen could be optimized. Even if your frozen sites are small, they're active, they're resulting and continue to send you contents, which might be interested on tablet to have, like, you know, alerts, you know, warnings uh, with your um, main frozen site uh, running on the screen and uh, in the background, the, the others. Thank you. I'm not surprised that there are so many questions on this part of the conference because, uh, again, it's the first time that we touch the uh, flesh and bones of the science, uh, but as I said in the uh, introduction, unfortunately we have a rather packed agenda tonight, so we may have to keep moving and allow Jerome to get back to his seat. Thank you, Jerome.